Coming up on today's episode, yeah, 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 we picked up an iPad. 60 hertz ACTVs, are these the next bargain? Comcast, lighting up 3D and beating down on the FCC, fiber versus cable and satellite, kick ass. We talked to John Ramita about bringing a comic book to the big screen, and of course, we got the Blu-ray releases for the week. This is HD Nation. Today's episode is brought to you by Squarespace, Netflix, and GoDaddy.com. Welcome to HD Nation. I'm Robert Heron. And I'm Patrick Norton. HD Nation is your guide to the best in HD content and the best in home theater gear, no matter what your budget is. Blu-ray, online, satellite, cable, over the air. If it's in HD, we like it. Yep. Well, before anybody asks, I'm just about sure we never get to review the Google Android-powered HD TV from People of Lava that was announced this week. But if anybody in Sweden can get their hands on one when it hits in September, well, let us know what you think, please. <laughs> yeah, we just had to say People of Lava. Now that is a brand name. Nothing against Samsung or Vizio or Sony, but... People of Lava. Yes, People of Lava. <laughs> on a more serious note, we're not panicking yet, but an appeals court decision this week pretty much slammed the FCC to the ground and kicked it over and over again for telling Comcast that Comcast had to treat all broadband streams equally, i.e. the whole concept of net neutrality. This could have some interesting effects on how well movies and other big fat files move across the internet. Why? The court pretty much said the FCC isn't empowered to regulate ISPs, ergo ISPs can do whatever they want, at least, you know, unless somebody else regulates them, in terms of throttling traffic moving across their network. Now, I'm pretty sure Comcast, who sued the FCC and the other major ISPs, don't want to find themselves the subject of, say, major regulation set down by, say, inactive Congress, I, especially if, say, Congress says, yes, the FCC has the power, here's the law we wrote to say that they have the power, which would be really kind of ugly to watch. So I don't think you're suddenly going to find Comcast material getting significantly prioritized bandwidth over, say, Netflix, which, of course, if you didn't know, degrades video quality based on your connection speed, which could be done by tools on the network, well, packet sniffers, if Comcast lost their mind. We'll, we'll see. I'm, I'm not panicking, but I'm just saying this is one to watch long term. I'm panicking. Anyway, <laughs> speaking of watching <laughs> epic battles, our buddy Ben over at Engadget HD says the true killer app for HD 3D is sports, which is why I've been watching golf this week. Excuse me? Yeah, baby. Yes, I have been watching golf. Comcast has well, a like NASCAR 3D channel. Polo golf? No, this is the Masters tournament, baby. So, wait, Comcast? I, yes, I have a reason for watching this, though. Comcast, uh, my TiVo actually popped up a message saying, you have a brand new channel. And it says, oh, it's called Com 3D HD TV, or 3D HD TV. Yeah, that's what it is. And it turns out that this is Comcast's new 3D test channel, and it went Ooh. live pretty much today, just in time for the 2010 Masters Tournament, tournament which is being held right now in Augusta, Georgia, which, uh, as I take it, being not the golf aficionado that I know <laughs> other people might be, it's a big deal in the world of golf. Now, the 3D is being broadcast over pretty much, you have to live in a selective market, of course, okay. which includes uh, places like here in the Bay Area of California, Seattle, Portland, Denver, Twin Cities. Where's the Twin Cities? Uh, that'd be like Minnesota. Okay. Minneapolis, St. Paul, sorry. Ah, just had to know. <laughs> anyway, Philadelphia, Boston, Washington, D.C., Atlanta, Chicago, Miami, and Indianapolis. Those are major metro markets. Pretty much. You do not have a 3D HD TV. Not at home. I do not. So, Were you able to see the fancy 3D? They are doing it using a split frame technology, side-by-side -side frame technology for delivering the HD signal. So, <laughs> Did you get your blue and gray glasses on? It's, it's not even that. You do need an HD, you do need a 3D HD TV. One of the new ones, either okay. from... Panasonic or Samsung and Sony soon, as well as the regular 3D glasses, and you also have to have an HD set-top box, HD service from Comcast. Uh, the set-top boxes can include the Moxie DVR Ooh. that we showed off a couple weeks ago, as well as the TiVo HD boxes. Those will work. Tuned into the channel, and if you don't have that 3D gear set up, all you'll see is a split screen with two images that are slightly <laughs> squeezed, well, a lot squeezed, showing the, uh, the basically the left and the right eye view. It's being shot in 3D on very high precision cameras, and it's actually being broadcast and transmitted using 
the, the technology you already have, save for the TV itself. Do they have I, content that'll actually fill this channel 24-7, or is it just going to be like, hey, here's a live sporting event. Hey, no, here's a movie this we got. just their test. Okay. I think it's only being used for this currently, and they'll include some of that 3D broadcast will be on their on-demand channel as well. If you want to just, if you eventually get the gear and you just want to see what that looks like, you'll be able to go back and do that. I'm saving it on my DVR for posterity's sake, but it's so you like... you can play it back later. Yeah, when I finally do get my own <laughs> little 3D HD TV. And the other thing, too, is this particular signal type is different from what you'd get on a Blu-ray disc that'll oh, be coming out. So not only is it half the resolution of what the uh, Blu-ray discs will right. be, but uh, you have to manually enable the TV's 3D mode. It won't automatically see the stream and go, oh, that's a 3D channel, unlike it would supposedly from a disc-based material. Hmm. So, eh, some trade-offs, but you know what? My current gear, save for I need a new TV now, but <laughs> dang, it, it looks good. And I have to say that the announcers were, were putting on 3D glasses during the broadcast, and they were they were mildly giddy to say the least. They were they were ooing and aahing just <laughs> every five minutes. I'm like, just practically inside his swing. It's neat. And if you have 3D <laughs> PC gear, you can go right to the Masters website. I think it's masters.com, oh, and they have a 3D view, live view right there. And Quick, I, and video.com. I need I'm, to order glasses. Yeah, I'm not sure what the PC setup would be. It's, uh, it's different from your, your TV side of things. But Maybe we can get something up and running deal. for next week. Uh, if you're on Twitter, at Criterion, Cass says, more at Criterion Films. That's Criterion, one of our favorite uh, production houses, basically. They take classic films and make them look pretty. They put them out on disc. They added a bunch of movies to Netflix. Watch instantly, just in time for the iPad app. They've got, actually, which, well, you tell them about it. Oh, hey, now, if you're dying to see the Criterion's loving treatment of classic movies, check out the complete list at Criterion Cast dot com slash Netflix. Netflix just added a bunch of seasons of different television shows recently too, so I'd keep an eye on that page. Yeah, if you're looking to waste massive amounts of time. Oh, oh you had to pull it out, didn't you? I had to pull it out. Well, this is actually uh, this is a Criterion's edition of Black Narcissus, a gorgeous post World War II flick came out of sort of the there's a big a, a wave, a movement of cinema after World War II coming out of Britain. Uh, this is one of the movies that inspired Martin Scorsese, amongst others, and it's actually playing right here on my iPad in 4x3 because it's a 4x3 movie. Um, this can also play iTunes HD video, so you can get your 720p-ish video on in the wee little screen. Look at the size of those black bars. And if yeah. you, yeah, well, if you if you want to minimize the black bars, it'll automatically oh. crop it for you. So hey, kind of slick. You can lose the edge detail. That's fancy. In exchange for the... Uh, black bars. YouTube and iTunes video both play back in dedicated applications just like the iPhone. If you're like me, you're thinking another portable HD -ish player, right? Well, don't get too excited because the video output is either via a composite cable or VGA output from the dock accessory. Wow. What the year dock, is this? Oh, it gets even worse, dude. I, I, I get, I'll explain <laughs> in a second. The dock maxes out at 1024 by 768 the native resolution of the screen, which is a tad short of 720p's 1280 by 720. More important is Barrett Lyon put it on Twitter. iPad's VGA output quality is great, but the output selection sucks. iTunes will not play DRM video out on VGA, nor will the Netflix app. Boo. Boo. Boo, especially given we're seeing um, <laughs> phones capable of HDMI output. Uh, say hello to the Evo 4G from mm -hmm. HTC. And maybe Apple will bring HDMI out on their next-gen Super HD iPhone coming out later this year. Yeah, I is guess. It, are they, is that really going to happen? I, that's the rumor. I mean, I look, look, Apple's notorious or infamous or, or beloved for <laughs> taking a 1.0 product, getting people like me to help work the bugs out of it, and then re revealing, reducing, releasing is a good ah. word, a spectacular 2.0 product. Excellent. <laughs> Who knows? In any case, by the way, if you're wondering why VGA, to connect to projectors for office meetings, of course, so you can show presentations in, uh, <laughs> in uh, 1024 by 768. Really? Even the output resolution maxes out at that, too? It gets even worse, dude. The dock, the iPad dock, $29, which you need to attach the $29 VGA adapter to the iPad. That's kind of harsh. Oh. Oh. <laughs> Shall we move on to some emails? I think it's time. Hey, Alan Kay wrote in. He said, while researching an HTPC build, that's a home theater PC, I came across a company which will soon be selling a quad tuner PC card that uses a single multi-stream cable card to tune and record four channels at once. Woohoo! Uh -huh. <laughs> now, I was hoping to get a review of the device before I hand over the $400 plus the cost of a capable home theater PC. The company is Seton Technologies, and they can be found at seatoncorp.com. Looking forward to your review, signed Alan K. Yeah, yeah, this now, is pretty cool. I'm hoping, or we're hoping to get one in. Heck, I'm, I'm, I'm definitely going to buy one for the HTPC I have at home because 
that's really the only part it's missing is to be able to grab my cable stream and, and do it up. <laughs> and besides that, cable cards are cheap, people. Remember that. Anyway, Ben, a uh, buddy of ours over at Engadget HD, uh, Mr. We, we just mentioned him. <laughs> yeah, we just mentioned him. He posted his review of the Seton Infinity V4 cable card on Engadget HD last week. Or this week? Last week. Last week. Ah, I'll get this right one of these days. It was days. eight days old when we recorded this, so it might ah, be a week and a half. We are time, time traveling this. here. Well, the short answer. The short answer <laughs> is that he loves it, and who wouldn't love recording four HD channels simultaneously? And the fact that you can build that yourself, and really, if you think about it, no cost for monthly subscription fees, mm -hmm. short of what you pay to get that cable card, which is often just a couple of dollars a month. Yeah. Yummy. Uh, TiVo and Tasty. Moxie and company, you're going to have some... Gonna have some more company real soon. That's all I can say. <laughs> Home builders. You're gonna need more hard drives. Yes. Uh, Captain, we need more storage. I have plenty of hard drives. <laughs> I have tons of hard drives. Need more larger hard drives. And it's the theaters this week. We can't wait for the Blu-ray. Our very own Roger Chang got to interview John Romita from Kick-Ass. That's coming up along with your suggestions for our list of World War II flicks in HD on the Blu-ray. Squarespace, people. It's a publishing system, a hosting system for anyone. You want a website, you want a complicated website, you want a blog, you want a sales center, whatever. No coding is required and it's easy to set up. It's basically, think of it like granimals for building a website. And if you already have a website, it's easy to move over to Squarespace. It supports WordPress, Blogger, TypePad, movable type imports, tools built right in. It'll migrate your posts, your comments, your tags, your authors, and your media. It's pretty slick. I can't code my way out of a box, but people who can, like my wife, are pretty impressed with what Squarespace lets them do and how fast it lets them get a web page up and running. Here's the deal. You don't use the promo code when you first sign up. Basically, you try it out a couple weeks later. Squarespace is going to say buy or go away. If you use the promo code HDNation, then you're going to score 10% off your order for the lifetime of the order. Basically, as long as you're hosted there, you're going to score 10% off. I think it's a pretty good deal. Check it out, people. Squarespace.com if you're looking for a better place to build and host a website. Following up on our list of top World War II movies in HD, we got an email from Simon who says, I'm deeply saddened that in your segment on top World War II films, you neglected to put the best World War II film of all time in, A Bridge Too Far, 1977, which is available in Blu-ray. Quality film, great soundtrack, and storyline. Another film I feel should have been there instead of one of your picks, Kelly's Heroes from 1970. I don't have a thing for 70s war films, honest. Although I did love Saving Private Ryan. It's not a film I'd want to watch over and over again. Oh, man. So yeah. for a minute there, i got to say, Saving Private Ryan, I completely understand. I, I like to watch that movie whenever I feel whiny. Just throw <laughs> that one in, and I, and I think about my grandfather in the Pacific, and I basically stop whining about work. Because you know what I mean? It's all special effects. Yeah, well, it wasn't back in the day. No. Now, for not a minute the there, I thought you said <laughs> A Bridge Over the River Kwai was out on Blu-ray, which is an extraordinary movie. I love it so much, not just for the whistling. I gotta say, I'm not the biggest fan of A Bridge Too Far, but it is a good flick. I will warn you, HighDefDigest.com says the video, which was encoded in MPEG 2, has some posterization and noise issues, so it might not be as spectacular, or, or at least as stunning a transfer as some of the other movies on our list. And while I personally love Kelly's Heroes, I consider it more of an Ocean Eleven-style comedy heist caper thing, not to mention a raging who's who of late 60s, early 70s acting, because it, just like Telly Savalas and, you know, our Who man. Who loves you, baby. <laughs> oh, my God, yeah. I, I, there's, there's a pretty amazing list of actors in there. And, of course, the tank commander played by Donald Sutherland, Love it, though it kind of seems anachronistic, having a Zen beatnik in a 40s character, especially commanding a tank, but I need to quit it with the negative waves. Uh, other folks mentioned Casablanca as a film that should have been on the list. Yeah. The Blu-ray comes from a gorgeous 2003 transfer. It's Pillar Box, so it's in the correct 133 to 1 theatrical format that was also used for the HD DVD version. And frankly, I love that they kept the mono soundtrack on there. The Blu-ray also has a DVD with a full-length commentary on the movie. Excuse me, a full-length documentary on the movie. That's a nice bonus that has me looking to upgrade from my old DVD copy. So there's probably more, but probably we'll have to, we'll have to check. We'll keep an eye on this one. I, there are probably a few out there that uh, hopefully people will just mention them to us and we'll get them in and check them out. Yeah. Uh, that's a collection worthy of having in, in the library at home. Speaking of which, if you guys have a top five list that you, you think we should have on the show, share with everybody out there. Do us a favor. Email us, hdnation at revision3.com. It's time for the Blu-ray releases, the new Blu-ray releases for the week of April 13th, 2010. It's a short list this week, and we'll start with one that we announced last episode, but was pushed back a week. 
A Nightmare on Elm Street, one of my favorites. Now you can finally get all the Freddy Krueger madness in its original 1984 glory, now released in a 1080p VC1 codec with DTS HD Master Audio 7.1 surround sound mix. The extras are the same you'd find on the two-disc Infinifilm DVD release, including a 50-minute documentary that explores all aspects of the film and its production, and a few alternate endings. So it's a great buy if you've been waiting to pick up this film, but if you already own the DVD, you won't see anything new. Next up, we have Pirate Radio. Released in the UK as The Boat That Rocked, this release was also pushed back, having originally been slated for a March 9th release. This fun film stars Philip Seymour Hoffman, Bill Nye, and Nick Frost, among others, and tells the story of a pirate radio station that broadcasts from a boat in the 1960s. Things get interesting when they have to defend themselves against the government officials intent on shutting them down. Extras include some deleted scenes, presumably that includes the 20 or so minutes that was cut out of the British release for the North American release. Also released this week, the 15th anniversary edition of Apollo 13. This classic stars Tom Hanks, Kevin Bacon, Gary Sinise, Ed Harris, and Bill Paxton, and was directed by Ron Howard. Based on the true story of the mission intended to land on the moon in 1970, something goes horribly wrong during the flight, bringing us the phrase, Houston, we have a problem. Extras include a Dateline segment on the mission, behind the scenes footage, and interviews from the making of the film. And even a recap of the last 45 years in space exploration. You'll even get a commentary with Ron Howard and Apollo 13 commander Jim Lovell. And finally we have The Slammin' Salmon. The creators of Super Troopers bring you this flick, which stars Michael Clark Duncan as a former heavyweight champion turned boxing themed seafood restaurant owner who owes money to the Japanese Yakuza and persuades his staff to sell more food than they've ever sold in their lives. This movie flew under the radar when it was released back in December and got a, ahem, mixed reviews at the time. But if you are a fan of Super Troopers, chances are you'll have fun with this one. Let's take a moment to thank one of our sponsors, Netflix. This week, my Netflix queue shows Matt Damon's 2009 dark humor thriller, The Informant, has shipped and should be waiting in my mailbox at home. Ah, convenience. With more than 12 million members, Netflix is the world's largest subscription service, streaming movies and TV episodes over the internet and sending DVDs by mail. For $8.99 a month, Netflix members can instantly watch unlimited TV episodes and movies streamed to their TVs and computers and can receive unlimited DVDs delivered quickly to their homes. With Netflix, there are never any due dates or late fees. Members can select from a growing library of titles that can be watched instantly and a vast array of titles on DVD. Among the large and expanding base of devices that can stream movies and TV episodes from Netflix right to members' TVs are Microsoft's Xbox 360 and Sony's PlayStation 3 game console, and this spring, Nintendo's Wii console. Find movies you love easily. You can browse, search, or see Netflix's recommendations for you. They even have a special back-of-box feature that lets you get the details of any movie instantly. As a Netflix Unlimited member, you get Blu-ray movies by mail in about one business day. Shipping is free, and there are no late fees or due dates. Blu-ray plans start at just $5.99 a month. As a new member and HD Nation viewer, you can get a free trial of membership. Go to www.netflix.com slash hdnation and sign up now. Be sure to use this URL so they'll know we sent you. Ash is a great question for anybody looking for a bargain HDTV. He says, I'm going to be buying a new HDTV soon, and I was wondering if I'm only going to be watching Blu-ray movies and some TV on my set, rarely watching sports, never gaming, is it really necessary to spend the extra cash on a 120 hertz HDTV, or would a 60 hertz TV with a 24p mode work just as well for watching movies? It is hard, he says, to find a definitive answer. Ash, great question. So, 240 hertz is the new 120 hertz, which is the new 60 hertz. Pretty much. So, 60 hertz a bargain if you're not going to be, if, is, is 60 hertz better for movies? Uh, no. I would say the 120 hertz models are better because of the frame rate of the movie. Mm -hmm. 24 frames per second. That's what all cinema that we go to the theater and look at, right. it was originally recorded at 24 frames per second, or pictures per second, you can think of it as. And it's nice to have a TV that has the same multiple of 24 mm -hmm. in order to display that back Five accurately. Five times 24 equals 120 hertz. There you go. Or if you're doing 240, it'd just be times 10. But yeah. I thought the 120 hertz looked awful, or the 240 hertz, because of the, it, it makes my beautiful cinema look like cheap. 80s videotape. The smoothing effect, yeah, that, that, that becomes the discussion then of interpolation. Do you interpolate, when you have more frames per second that the TV can display than there are frames of material coming from the source, mm -hmm. what do you do in between? Right. Do, you, do, you, do you make up frames that are in the in-between cases? That's interpolation. Interpolation. Or do you then repeat that first frame until you get to that next frame and just repeat the exact same thing over and over 
and that gives you what you would then see is really just a, a very look, a look that's very similar to what you right. get in the theater. It should look identical to the cinema look. So for a 3-2 pull down, which allows a 60 hertz to pretend it's properly displaying a Trying 24 frames per second. to convert that 24 to 60. Right. And in that way, you've got to basically go a 3-2 pattern with Doesn't the frame rate. Does it look just as good as the 120 hertz? It'll look okay, but if, you're, if you want to be a purist about it, right. get, that, get that 120 hertz technology. But then you would have to make sure that when you go to watch your movies or any other content that's recorded in 24 hertz, 24 frames per second, you want to make sure that you go into the TV and either set it to, I'm hoping it's movie mode or cinema mode, will disable the interpolation and go with frame repeat. Mm -hmm. Or you could manually go in and just say, you know what, turn off that mode. Every TV that has this interpolation function has a way to turn it off. So you'd say save up a couple more weeks, buy 120 hertz television if you can. And we should point out, by the end of this year, everything, even the cheap stuff, is probably going to be 120 hertz. Um, he did mention, though, some 60 hertz sets that offer a 48 hertz mode. Oh, really? Which would be a frame doubling. You mentioned that, actually. I did. Oh, he did. Oh, okay. Maybe I talked about that earlier. But <laughs> the one thing about that case, I've seen. I've looked at 48 hertz TVs. Mm -hmm. uh, it was a Sony panel actually that had that mode. And I was impressed that it had it, but it was it wasn't fast enough. It was introducing a little bit of flicker to the picture, and it made it distracting to watch. Now, when you get to 72 hertz and above, like 120 hertz, that's where I really see it to kick in and become a, a smoother, watchable right. picture at that point. And you think about all of your sporting events too. Most sporting events are recorded in 720p60. Mm -hmm. That's a Fox Sports uses that a lot. And that format benefits greatly from the interpolation function, right. the default setting of the TV. You'll actually get a clearer picture. And you think about broadcast TV and primetime, a lot of it's done in the 1080i30 format. That also benefits directly from interpolation, providing smoother, clearer pictures on LCD technology. So basically what you're saying is, Unless you're getting an insane bargain on that 60 hertz television, uh, 60 hertz HD TV, you should probably, if possible, go with 120 hertz. Totally. HDTV. And I think you mentioned gaming too as one mm -hmm. of his interests. Not uh, interesting. No. Never games. Oh, okay. Never games. Never mind then. However, However if you are into gaming, <laughs> it would benefit because of the faster pixel speeds, being able to keep up with fast moving text on the screen, uh, hopefully reducing some blurring and quick motion or any other, you know, I'm thinking first person shooters or scrolling text in like your favorite guitar style game right. or whatever. So if bargain price now is absolutely your only criterion, 60 hertz television is okay. Do yourself a favor though, check online, check Amazon, check the big box stores, check the closeouts, check your local Costco, because there's nothing worse than finding out that your bargain turns out to have been the standard or inflated price you can buy somewhere else. Just saying, because I'm cheap. Blu-rays you want to watch over and over again start with great movies and while Kick-Ass is, well, it's a little ways away from the disc world, it hits the big screens at the movie theaters this week. We love the press screening we saw. We would have loved it even if we paid for the tickets. So when we were offered a chance to interview co-creator and artist of Kick-Ass, John Romita Jr., we jumped on it and asked him about his role in moving a comic book to the big screen. Now one of the big things that a lot of people worry about when they try to adapt especially comic books to the big screen, is that it's somehow going to get ham-fisted and cut into different directions that they didn't intend. What were your biggest concerns going into this movie that you had? The visual aspect of it. But it was brief because I spoke to Mark, and I had met Matthew Vaughn at the time, <clears throat> but I spoke to him briefly, is that he was a fan of the comic. He was a fan of the art. Now that would have been easy to say, right, I'm sure you are, but he parted upon me that he wanted to take scenes literally from the comic and he ended up doing that so he was telling the truth and he was a fan of it fan of the visuals fan of the story uh, that was the concern that was just knocked out immediately when I found that out that he was that wanted to be that close to the original product and that is such a compliment I think it's a testament to Matthew and it's a, a, a reaction to the quality of the story Speaking of the art, I believe you actually did uh, additional art for the movie that wasn't in the book. Now, was that something that you did on your own or you did uh, in concert with the, with the production crew? It was in concert with the director and the production crew. Matthew Vaughn wanted something called the Wall of Villains, which is a shrine that uh, Nicolas Cage's character creates, as opposed to putting up uh, you know, ears around your neck or hanging uh, body parts up on a wall. He has a Wall of Villains, which is illustrations of his victims leading up to the guy that he wants, who is the, the ultimate bad guy. So they asked me to draw these uh, photo shots, these uh, portraits of the victims, calling a wall of villains, about 50 drawings. And then there was an animated sequence, uh, which is the origin of Nicolas Cage's character. Mm -hmm. It's a flashback, and uh, I had to do the artwork for the animated sequence. And they, Matthew Vaughn asked me to direct it, 
And uh, I, I was, my head was falling off at that point. This is just the, ni the nicest thing could have been asked of me, the biggest compliment I've ever had, or short of my father telling me he liked my artwork. <laughs> One of the things that you know, a lot of studios do is they create the DVD and Blu-ray immediately after the movie's released. What would you like to see, uh, either as extras or stuff that you didn't think, uh, that wasn't uh, included in the movie that you'd like to have on those discs? That's a good question. There's a, a production crew right now with a guy named John Mefford who are still to this day working on the DVD. There's um, so much behind the scenes stuff, whether it's Mark's and my studios uh, to see the comic work or to see um, uh, the design, designs of the, the preliminary drawings of the designs of the costumes. Uh, my extra work uh, for the designs in the comic is compared to the, the designs in the, in the film. Uh, Costume-wise, I'd love to see everything and anything that was done from from square one on the comic, and show how that paralleled square one on the film. And I think that's all you'd really need. And then, of course, to have uh, Jane and uh, Jane Goldwyn and and uh, Matthew discuss how they used the comic uh, in in uh, in ways to come up with the screenplay. Just everything. I, I don't see how you could stop short. It's such a nice, uh, uh, fan fantastic. Uh, a production of the whole shebang uh, that from the comic to the finished product it's all connected in some way and I love it cool thank you very much that's uh, John Romita jr. You, seriously you need to watch this movie it's amazing thank you very much right. my thank pleasure you. we'd like to thank John Romita jr. for the interview and Amber and Shannon in the PR department for making it happen so we can get in to get the interviews you can catch kick-ass April 16th in a theater near you Let's take a moment to thank one of our sponsors, GoDaddy.com. Keep your personal information away from spammers, hackers, and your crazy ex-roommate. Private domain registration from GoDaddy.com protects your privacy by keeping your address, phone number, and more out of the public database. And use the code HDN8 to get 10% off any order of $40 or more. And be sure to check out Revision3.com slash GoDaddy for a list of all the amazing GoDaddy deals from Revision3. Get a good heads up from at Ted Naz, who tweeted a reminder for everybody getting their flash on. He says, hey, for the Xeno HD, make certain you grab the Flash 10.1 beta with GPU acceleration. I run an Atom home theater PC, and it works great now. So does that yeah. do the NVIDIA and ATI? Pretty much all I of the I want to say it should accelerate on ATI hardware as well, but I'm, I'm suddenly not 100% sure of that. I well, know he's got, he's got an ATI if he's got a Xeno HD, so that's a yes for that. Okay. It works for your... And then it must. Your eye on NVIDIA. Uh, it definitely works for that. that. Look, we've come to a consensus. If, yeah, and it doesn't... <laughs> even if you're running a fast machine, like my big, honking, badass Core i7-powered machine at home, it will be happier, and you will waste less of your CPU, which is a good thing if you load that 10.1 beta for Flash, because quite frankly, I'm tired of maxing out my CPU because of delete expletive Flash. Flash ads on web pages. Wah, Just say it. <laughs> anyway, Dan emailed. He said, "Hey, in the last two episodes, I heard y'all talking about TV providers out in California. Mm -hmm. I don't live in California. Where I live, we have four providers: Comcast, DirecTV, Dish, and new to the game, EPB. We got three of those four. Hey, internet speeds for home use are 100 megabit up and down. With that, which provider would have the best picture quality?" Sign Dan. Uh, okay, so we definitely know that Comcast should have better HD quality, or in theory, right? Should in have theory. better HD in quality. In theory, they should all be the same. Yeah, well, well, dream on. Okay, first of all, EPB is, is called Phi TV. It sounds like it has potential. So the 100 megabits per second up and down is serious bandwidth, and EPB's Phi TV has decent, it actually has a pretty decent HD TV lineup. Most of my favorite channels are available in HD, Sci-Fi, Nat Geo, Discovery, Travel Channel, blah, 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 because I need to get my Bourdain on. Yeah. And, of course, premium channels like HBO, Cinemax, Showtime, Stars, Encore, all available in HD, at least I think. The premium, cha I assume the premium channels are available in HD. That said, that monster symmetrical 100 megabit per second upload and download, which makes you think, oh, I'm going to download videos in seconds, it's going to cost you 350 bucks a month. At the other end of their pricing structure, 15 megabits per second, also symmetrical, which is awesome if you upload video anywhere like we do at work. Uh, it's a little more wallet friendly at 58 bucks a month. 20 megabits per second, 70 bucks a month. 50 bucks is or 50 megabits per second is 175 bucks a month. Um, and then your, of course, your your cable fee, your television fee is on top of that. So who's got more bandwidth? Fiber to the channel, satellite, or copper? Or fiber to the curb, copper, 
from like Comcast or the the sat because the satellite the satellite has the least amount of bandwidth to work with, right? It does, but they're probably using the most advanced compression technique. Mm -hmm. I mean, most of the satellite providers, Dish and Directv, they're both using MPEG four. Not 100% yet, but right. very close to it. So it's hard to make a comp direct comparison between, say, an MPEG-2 transport stream from your cable provider, or in this case from a, Fi a FIOS-type company, <laughs> uh, it, compare that directly to your satellite providers, right. who say, say satellite's using 12 megabit per channel, and but they're using a more efficient codec, which essentially, say, is 100% better. So it's effectively is acting like a 24 megabit stream. That would be adequate for any mm -hmm. broadcast HD stream out there. So. I, in my personal experience, I'm going to say that yes, the satellite content does look a little softer to my eye mm -hmm. than I do see from cable. I haven't had a lot of experience though with fiber-based delivery systems. One benefit for the fiber delivery systems though is multiple channels to multiple TVs or being able to record multiple channels at the same time, which is something you can do with some hardware shenanigans on the cable side of things. But essentially, it's like you, a $400 Seton cable car there you or go. a Moxie tuner or a. <laughs> but just using the standard box from them, you should be able to record as many channels as the bandwidth supports from on the television side of things. Now, this shouldn't in any way influence your broadband speeds for your right. internet connection, but if it's anything like our AT&T service out here, they claim you can record up to four standard def channels at once, or like two high def channels, or some combination thereof. So, this something is, to consider, this if that's important those, to you. Yeah, I mean, this is one of those situations where if you can go to the EPB, has got a local office, and you can go look at the Fi TV in HD, uh, go look at your neighbors if they have Comcast, see if any of your neighbors have Direct TV, and look at the stuff you like and see if you see a difference. Do a price comparison, too, because yeah. there might be differences. You might get a better deal, and it's like, okay, that just overrided everything. Right. A significantly better deal. And wow, i got to say, symmetrical bandwidth is really attractive, because... I can get 100 megabit from Comcast, but I'm afraid to add, or Xfinity, I'm not sure what to call them anymore, but I'm, <laughs> I'm not sure what that's going to run me, probably more than I'm willing to pay. The other thing to keep in mind, too, if you have a large household and you're driving lots of televisions, you might be limited in terms of how many channels simultaneously you can watch different channels at once within that household using a, a basically a bit delivery system over fiber. Right. That's just one thing to keep in mind. I'd actually like to know if anybody has like six TVs in their house and how they deal with that. Do they have to run two separate connections maybe to drive? How many dishes they have to have on the roof? Or that. Well, for dish, it would be a little bit easier, I think. But for, for fiber, it's like those are bits. And it's like you can only put so many bits through that copper. So just one thing to keep in mind. Hopefully we haven't confused you even more. <laughs> Dr. Bowser emails, one of my favorite features on DVD players is the resume function, the ability to remember where a disc was stopped and resume playback at a later time. I like that one too. At one point, so many players could remember where to resume from the last 40 disc plays. His doctor's, Dr. Bowser's current Sony player remembers where to resume even if the power is lost. He's been trying to find this feature on Blu-ray players. The PS3 added the feature in one of their updates, he says, but it doesn't always work, especially on Blu-ray discs. Ouch. Do you know of any Blu-ray players that have a resume function that works, Mr. Heron? No. Asks Dr. Bowser. <laughs> Short answer is no, unfortunately. <laughs> Why? That is something I'm investigating right now. I'm actually contacted Panasonic's Hollywood Lab down in LA, and they do a lot of Blu-ray disc production. I'm trying to get a final answer on this, but my belief is that Blu-ray movies that use Blu-ray disc Java for the menu system, that little loading graph you'll see on mm -hmm. just about every disc is basically the Java engine warming up and loading up the menus and things like that. That makes it unable to support a player's resume playback feature. You'd think so, they could put a note somewhere on some memory in the player. One possible workaround would be that most of the movies also offer a bookmarking function. Mm -hmm. You can usually hit a yellow button on the Blu-ray remote, or one of the buttons usually has some sort of bookmarking feature. If it's offered, you could use that to do a workaround, and that, that feature is usually available in the pop-up menu on a Blu-ray disc. <coughs> I will say, though, that one of the things... HDTV? Yeah. Or HD, HDDVD. HDDVD, back in the day. Oh, I still love this format. It just won't die, but I, I'm over it. Anyway, HDDVD no, <laughs> had, that, over had that resume functionality there, and that was always something really nice. Whenever I'd switch even the same movie, it's like, oh, I suddenly couldn't just resume anymore. Mm -hmm. But with an HDDVD disc, I could. You also had menus at the gate for version 1. Point, like proper full screen pop-up menus in HDDVD. I, I, yeah. I just remember the original, the earliest Blu-ray movies when they first started trickling out. Let's they'd go, they'd dump right to the main menu. No <sighs> skipping this and that and the other in any way. I guess there's always that stop-stop play thing. You can always do that.
Stop, stop, play. Yep. Have you checked out Byte Jacker yet? Hosted by Anthony Carboni, Byte Jacker covers the best in the world of independent and downloadable video games. We're talking about serious time killers, people, and Anthony's got in-depth reviews, analysis, and every week he's going to tell you what you should get from the Xbox Live Marketplace, WiiWare, iPhone, and tons more. Check it out every Thursday at revision3.com slash Byte Jacker. Byte Jacker, I like saying that. Excellent. <laughs> <laughs> we hope you guys enjoyed this episode of HD Nation. As always, we want to know what you think, so send your comments, questions, Questions or suggestions to hdnation at revision3.com. And of course, you can follow us on Twitter, twitter.com slash hdnation, or at Robert Heron, or at Patrick Norton, or hang out with the other viewers in the HD Nation forums at revision3.com slash forum. And of course, we've got links to the stuff we talk about in the show in the show notes on each show page at hdnation.tv. You'll also find all of the links to subscribe to the show, so if you're not getting the latest episode of HD Nation delivered to your podcatcher, TiVo, whatever. Where, what are you waiting for? That's right. Do us a favor, subscribe and watch and tell your friends. Until hey. next time. <laughs> Thanks for watching, everyone. I'm Robert Heron. I'm Patrick Norton. We'll see you next week on HD Nation.